All right, I think you're good to go, sir. All right, we'll call the meeting to order at 6.03. First on the agenda is to approve the agenda. Is there anything that needs to be amended? Um, I just need to add a, an executive session at the end for a personnel matter. It should take like five minutes. Okay. Okay, we should just set the rules right now. Are we doing seconds tonight or not? Because sometimes yeah, we, have we enough. do, Lin sometimes Lindley's here. we If Lindley don't. wasn't here, I'd say so, no, but. I just want to be sure. Yeah, so we just need a second. Second. Okay, Thank second you. by Gene, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. I just get a little confused when I'm taking the minutes, what we're well, up to. I mean, if. I know, I just want to be sure, want to be and consistent. Paul won't. Paul's not Paul here Paul won't tonight. be with us this, nope. this evening, so. No. All right, so All right, um, first up we have Kurt. Kurt is back in session, so he's here to update us on what's going on uh, up in Montpelier. Uh, yeah? You first. We can hear you. Did you say you could hear him? Yeah, I said I could hear him. Yeah, you can stay there. You, you can, can hear me okay? <laughs> yeah, I'll speak loud. So, yeah, I mean, uh, thank you. I want you to... Uh, one reason why I wanted to come was just to let you know that I'm still around uh, and and that if there's anything that you need from me um, you know the uh, you know the, as you know the legislative session is out of session now and uh, but it doesn't mean that nothing is going on it just means that we're not meeting as a whole and one one of the things as you may recall in my first two years was that I really tried to educate folks about how the system works because we don't often really know and uh, and so having been through one cycle I now know that when I when I very first started in the legislature I got there my first day and there was a stack of bills and I'm like how did this happen <laughs> and and so the answer is is that basically from November 9th until January 4th is when uh, those people who've been elected are submitting bills and uh, and that the Legislative Council is working on those and starting to prepare those. So if there's things that the town wants the legislature to address or to think about or look into or anything like that, during that period is the, the best time to do it because once we're in session January 4th, then there's all, then we're already processing the bills that are in and as you know, by the uh, first week of March, we basically hit uh, what's called the crossover period, where all the bills in the House go to the Senate and all the bills in the Senate go to the House. And so if a bill hasn't passed out of the House by that point, it's basically dead. Uh, and uh, unless somebody resurrects a piece and tucks it into someone else's bill. Uh, so it, uh, so just to kind of give you a timeline, to give you, you a sense of what how to make the system work. Because uh, uh, last year, you know, I would have, it, without fail, some, some member of the community would call me the day after, you know, it was no longer available to put a bill in mm -hmm. and say, hey, I'd like you to do this bill. And I'm like, yeah, now you can, we're gonna have to wait a year. And I'm, I'm sorry, I wish there was something I could do. So, uh, so I wanted to kind of proactively get, you know, let you all know that that's, that's the situation. Uh, the House that has some summer committees that are meeting. I, a lot of them are rules committees and stuff on how to how they're going to do business next year. Uh, one of the committees that I'm not on, but I've been following their their progress, is a committee to look into changing the funding mechanism for the uh, education fund to switch to a a. Uh, Income tax base uh, is what, what they're exploring. Uh, it's a it's an idea that's supported by the Vermont League of Cities and Towns, uh, by uh, the uh, NEA, Vermont NEA. Uh, it's also uh, I don't think they've had an official vote, but they've written letters of recommendation. The Principals Association and a number of other. So um, so that's uh, and they're looking at a number of options. You know, certainly. 
just switch all education funding to income tax base or, or interim pieces of that where, where some of it is, is income tax base and some of it is, you know, you, you don't pay on your homestead, but you, you pay on the, on the rest. Or, or, and then, of course, people who have second homes, they're, you know, what, you know, what they pay in. So they're exploring all those options. Uh, if anyone wants, I can send you the link to that whole discussion and all that, that paper, because I think that's an important piece of information for all of our communities, that this, are, this is something that's being discussed. Um, How far do you think it's going to go? Do you think it'll, huh? do you think it'll come to a plan that you actually vote on, or do you think it'll just be, you know, another year of discussion? It's, I mean... Hard to tell. You, it, hard to tell, especially since the what gets on the agenda is determined by the uh, committee chairs mm -hmm. and election year uh, with a lot of retirees. Uh, you know, there's going to be a whole bunch of different committee chairs, and so not, you know, it kind of depends on who gets in where and what they do. But there does seem to be an increasing amount of, of interest and pressure on this uh, issue. And so uh, I don't know, <clears throat> I'm pretty sure a bill will probably be submitted, <clears throat> whether it gets into committee or whether it gets out of committee. It's hard, hard to know. A lot of these really big bills often take multiple sessions because it's an incremental development along the way. Right. Yeah. You know, they've been doing this for 50 years. It what? They've been doing this for 50 years, trying to figure out how to adjust the funding system. And they've tried several different kinds. So I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad for you that you're not on that committee because you could be there 14 hours a day, seven days a week, and at the end of the session, you will have no answer. And I'm sorry, I'm so pessimistic. pessimistic. <laughs> but like I said, I, I served the, the school board for 13 years. I followed it for several years before and since. And this has all been talked about yeah. for about 50 years. <laughs> and we're still in the bucket. Yeah. And, so good yeah, luck. Uh, I, I think sometimes it really comes to a critical mass of, of interest. Uh, of people being frustrated and saying, "All right, you know, let's move this forward," and uh, and of course, it also comes down to a critical uh, situation on funding in the schools. And again, the, the more uh, property ta property owners feel the burden of that, the more they express their opinion on it, and the more more pressure arises. So, I mean, I won't guarantee that they're going to do anything, but I just want to inform you that that is a committee that is. Is uh, getting quite a lot of uh, summer attention this this time around. So, I have a question. Would you know um, when is the deadline if I want to get something into the um, state's appropriation bill? Sometimes towns can get into there if they're looking for money for a specific thing. Do any idea what the time frame is on that? Is that also because uh, the into the appropriation? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know the exact date. I can. Can you find out? Yeah, I can find out. I, if, if, uh, I can. Yes, I will do my best to find out. Yeah. Uh, they, uh, but usually that again, right? It, all that stuff has to get out, has to get out of appropriation, appropriations by March. Yeah. So uh, if I were guessing, end of January. Uh, yeah, I just I can't remember, and um, so I'm not saying I will, but I might have something that I want in the capital, into the appropriations. And then I know you got to take your chances and make it through the whole gamut. And if you make it to the end, you win. But um, I'm just curious, just in case, um, what that would look like. Just there's some new, um, uh, apparently the uh, state of Vermont has been lagging behind about five years from the EPA. So the EPA finally got on the state uh, for water and, um, or for wastewater for sure, possibly water, but definitely wastewater because we just went through our inspection. And apparently we heard it right from them, the state, that there was, that the EPA got a hold of them and said, if you don't start adhering to EPA standards, then the EPA is going to start issuing your wastewater permits and not you, not the state. So when we met with the state for our inspection, all of a sudden there's increased wet testing and E. coli testing, and we need to buy another 20, 
thousand dollar plus worth of equipment that if they've known that this standard has been coming and all of a sudden it's critical mass, I don't have the money for that. And um, so it's so there's just some things that are just kind of that are coming. So I'm not saying I will put something in the appropriations, but I'd like to know my deadline in case I want to pursue that option. I'll, I'll get that date for Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate it. Um, on another note, just out of curiosity, um, I was telling Chris uh, Jarvis about it. I had heard this information about um, it's called mental health first aid, something for high school and maybe junior high and teachers, where it's something that they've kind of piloted in other um, states, uh, cities, and looking where teachers and even students can get take these classes to be, um, you know, learning and mentoring and understanding more about, you know, mental health issues. And I was just curious if that, I know you're not on the education committee, but if that, if you're, if the state will be looking for funding to assist schools, obviously the state's kind of hit critical mass. They're, they have a shortage of counselors, a shortage of psychiatrists and um, for the whole state. So I was just curious if you thought the state was going to be dealing with that through education or Department of Health or how they're going to try to attract, you know, mental health people to Vermont for help. Yeah, I don't, <clears throat> I, I had not heard about it. Yeah. I don't know if that committee yeah. is up on that um, yeah. I, either, because of course that would be, that would be, uh, I, I, either or, right, healthcare or education. Yeah, exactly. I and, was uh, so. Yeah, it's just such a big issue, you know, before COVID and then after COVID. And, um, you know, I, I know, you know, people who are counselors who are saying they have a waiting list yeah. and they loot one and then all of a sudden there's this huge waiting list and people just can't get the services they need. And so, which is scary. And, um, you know, certainly the suicide rate for young people is, just so horribly high. I just was curious if that's on the state's radar, either Department of Health or Education or, or everybody, I guess, right? It just seems yeah. like it's a big thing. I was just curious if you'd heard. I, can, I, I have it. I, again, I can, I can query some of the folks yeah. uh, in, you know, in those committees and just see if, they, yeah. if it's on their radar. I don't know. I guess I just really wanted to put it on your radar just yeah. to let you know that you know, it's, it's something that we're hearing about, even at the office that we're hearing about, people are having help finding assistance for their family. Um, yeah. And, you know, I'm telling people call 211, call it, but, you know, they're not getting anywhere, so. Yeah, yeah. It's just, I don't know, yeah. so. No, the state told us at the school, you know, because um, we had inquired about that and because right now we're down like one and a half positions in our SU with counselors, and 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 the uh, reply we got back is, you know, we understand, but you're required to meet these, <laughs> you know, these requirements. And it's like, well, we can't even hire anybody. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, we've been we've been looking for years and can't hire anybody. So, um, yeah, the I guess issue. a couple of things on. Well, we're going through budget season ourselves, so. <laughs> Um, some of the things that are easy to hit you with um, usually is, and we're seeing it again this year, is a significant increase in health insurance. Um, you know, for everything that's coming down with, you know, inflation and budgetary issues, you know, and the state approved a 21% increase this year. I mean, yeah, I was, I, I yeah. just, you know. Yeah, in January, I know, and we budgeted 10 or and these 12%. are, I mean, I, one, I can't believe that it was allowed. I mean, mm. it sounded like they asked for 30. They did. And they got 21, but I'm like, you know, this, you know, normally a, a jump for us is 10, 12. Yeah, we've been lucky. We had seven. We've had, you know, and we budget because the rates come out in January. So obviously we budget 18 months out, just like the state. So you're kind of, you know, your crystal ball. So we take the current rates and then we'll do 10, 12%. And then, yeah, 21 and a half, I was like, oh, my. So, I mean. I, mean, <laughs> I can't. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. oh, I'm like, okay. So, how I am mean, I going to come up with that money? I mean, we're talking, you know, at a small town like this, I mean. It's significant. You know, I haven't done the math up of what that is going to do for us, but that, you know, if I had to guess, that's 
one to two pennies on the tax rate just just for us to if, if we if we decide to keep you know health insurance funded exactly the same you know we're, we're talking one or two penny increase on taxpayers just for health insurance i mean that hasn't even gotten to you know the slew of things that we'll be going through <laughs> a budget of anything from fuel to salt to you name it that yeah. we use for the town it's all gone up i mean yeah, everything's up you Salt's know. up ten bucks. Uh, yeah, it went from I mean, seventy. I mean, I love it that they use, you know, that inflation's up ten percent. But I can't find a product that's up ten percent. They're all up fifteen, twenty, thirty, forty percent. So I don't know how inflation's only up ten. But I mean, we're going through our budget, and this is, you know, we like to hit the budget at. I wouldn't say a high level, but you know, what are kind of our our wants versus our needs up front, right? And and I don't think we're too over or outlandish, but I mean, we're already talking our budgets, you know, without even looking is up a quarter million dollars on a town of this size, right? I mean, and, and, and you know, what that means is, you know, about every $20,000 is one penny, as you know, right? So, I mean, we start thinking, you know, we're already talking 12, 13 cents, you know, and then to provide relatively the same services that we provide this year, right? So, and we, I mean, can people afford 12 or 13 cents on the tax rate? Mm -hmm. You know, not for very long. Yeah. Um, so what cuts and services are we gonna have to start making? And I think that's gonna be the, the difficulty for our board here the next month or two is to find out, you know, what do we perceive to be an honest, affordable tax increase because it's happening. Um, and then what services are we gonna have to minimize because of that? So. And I mean, health insurance kind of just put us right in the back seat already. It's kind of like um, retirement a year and oh, a half ago when all of a sudden, hey, uh, <laughs> you know, we're adding 20% of the retirement. It's like, what? Yeah. Um, you know, so I, I don't know what discussions we're having at the state in regards to curbing some of these costs or. Um, yeah, I mean, and I'm sure, I mean, I, I you know, uh, I came into the legislature in, a, in the golden age of, of ARPA, right? So, uh, so yeah, the, the uh, I think legislature was probably. I mean, there was there were definitely those folks that were trying to, you know, one time money. Mm -hmm. But but there are some other people that it was a little tempting to leave it there, and and I, I think that's we're going to we're going to see in these next two years. Uh, uh, you know, suddenly, okay, now that money's not there anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, to bolster that, and that now you got to deal with the real budget, and uh, and uh, I think it's going to be, uh, it's going to be an interesting uh, session sense. around there, uh, trying to what do you cut? How do you stay within budget? How do you all that stuff? Need to say it because they Those folks need to leave. You need people who. Who, are, who live like you and I do? Mm. When it comes to cut, when it comes to draw in the belt, yeah. we do. Um, well, I think that you know, I mean, the, the town does. I mean, we can't. It is. You and know. I also wonder this twenty-one percent on top of the nineteen percent and all that. Are they? Is somebody up there who's pushing this stuff? Pushing municipal government and school systems and every everything that's funded down from the state mm -hmm. to start running like a business. Because who in the business world is offering the insurance and the health, uh, health insurance and the retirement mm -hmm. that municipal and school offer? Mm -hmm. This many people right. offer that. Yeah, because this people, many. people don't have the sort of a plan anymore. A lot of them gone to 401ks. I, I would actually assume that the state would do that at some point, say, boom, if you are before this, then you have a defined benefit plan. If you're after this, you're going to 401k, yeah. like new hires get X, Y, or Z. But it is interesting, and it's such a tough market that as, you know, I mean, the state's got a bunch of empty seats up there that they can't find people for. I know they have a lot of holes. And... Um, you know, we can't find people. And so it's also very back. difficult to cut a package on existing exactly. employees when you're, can't find you can't anybody find anybody anyway. else to work. So it, it, it does, and I'm sure the state is in a very, in, in the same situation, because I know you have a lot of departments that are understaffed. And yeah. um, so it's, I, I just am still trying to figure out where all the people went. I mean, we have a low unemployment, where did everybody go? 
did I have like a bunch of people must have retired, but I'm like, where did everybody go? Because after COVID, you know, it seemed like we became this real shortage. And I think unemployment's at what, two point something percent in Vermont right now? Yeah, if you believe that, yeah. Yeah, I'm like, eh, you know, so. I mean, just the challenge, as you know, with us, like, you know, the last half a dozen years, I mean, our challenge in this town was to fund the, our, our you know, future accounts to, to build infrastructure that was lagging, right? I mean, so we've been kind of um, getting back up to speed and now that I would, I would say relatively, you know, confident that, you know, the, the last budget cycle, you know, we kind of got to what I would perceive to be like on that plateau where we should be. And now, now we got to start talking about these, if we want to stay with the, the, um, the services, you know, what are we, you know, either we're going to have to ask for the Cadillac or we're going to have to cut it back here. And it, it's challenging because it, it's just kind of, it's disappointing to see that, you know, we had everything going in the right direction and now we may have to render some services. I mean, Ellie's looking for money for, for, for rec tonight, you know, and, and there's a slew of other pieces that are great, everything that benefits our community. But now, you know, you know, just, let's just say just the healthcare increases alone, you know, I, now we have as a board to figure out, do we just accept those increases or do we have to find two pennies to offset that in the budget? That's, and, and, and I think just sometimes at the local level, you know, speaking for myself, but it just seems like nobody at Montpelier hears us. You know, it just, it, it's, they'll take care of it. We'll just push it down to the lower level and they'll, they'll have to deal with it. Cause we're, we're not gonna deal with it. Like retirement, like, eh. You know, okay. we put a Band-Aid on it, it's good. Bethel's got to take care of it and, you know, all these towns. Yeah. It just sometimes doesn't seem like, and I know you're the new guy, but it's sometimes it doesn't seem like the voices are being heard, you know, in Montpelier, the, the yeah. frustrations that we have at the lower level. So we want you to go just say no. <laughs> Kirk's motto is Or yes, say or yes no. for anything that goes for Bethel, right? <laughs> so. And I, I may be the only person here who disagrees. Okay. Uh, for me, it's a justice issue. Uh, I remember being so grateful that I was on a defined benefit plan because it forced me to save enough for my retirement. When that defined bed to, in order to match that, I would have had to have had 15% in IRAs. And uh, I would not have been able to retire had it not been for that. Now, I know the world has changed and that uh, a lot of folk in the private sector have moved to away from a defined benefit plan. Uh, I also know that there's a lot of talk out there about Social Security, how secure it is. Um, we can have a longer conversation about that. But I, uh, I just strongly feel as a citizen and as a select board member that offering, especially in a low unemployment time, fringe benefits that make a difference, uh, can make a difference in employability. And I also understand, I understand that, that it hits towns. It also hits the state in terms of its retirement and health care and all the rest of it. So I'm, now, does that mean that maybe we ought to ask those folk to budget out 18 or even 24 months? I think that there's, or provide some sort of an escape clause <laughs> for those of us who have already budgeted and uh, will find it extraordinarily difficult. Uh, I think that that's something. Are you still on the same committee? Am I still on what? Same committee. Uh, I am until oh. knows. <laughs> I, I, I am until January 4th, but we're not. We're not meeting, so uh, and then <clears throat> that's entirely up to the to the 
uh, speaker uh, who, will, who will sign committees. Uh, I'm hoping to be on the same committee. Are you going back in person, Kirk? Are you meeting in person? Yeah, we, and we met in person for the end of yes. last year. Uh, but, we were, but we are going to be, the latest rules that have come out are in person, no masks uh, or anything. Uh, they're, they're going to drop off because, uh, as they pointed out, they, even though officially, even now, if you go visit the state house, you're supposed to be masked, but no one is. And so they've just finally said, you know, obviously we're not enforcing this anymore, so, so why, why hold us to it? So it's, uh, in theory, it's business as usual now. I, I wasn't sure, but, yeah. but thank you for coming. And then um, let me know, just send me an email when you want to start. You came monthly during the session. If you want to start that in January, just yep. email me and let me know if it's the, the second or fourth Monday that works for you. Yeah. Whatever you want, just email me and I'll work in all, yeah. all winter. So whatever yeah. works for you. But I just appreciate you coming because it's, yeah. it's nice to have a legislator who comes and yeah. when, when I have a better sense of when I'll know something mm -hmm. uh, in January, I'll, yeah. yeah. Pro probably the, either the second select board yeah. meeting or maybe the first one in February when it's something. Oh, I don't know. You have Best Kirk. Did, so remember Pre the- apportionment? Yeah. Do, do you know any updates on that, the reapportionment that was going on? Reapportionment. Did they, did it go through? Have you changed your district or anything, or is that? Oh, oh, the redistricting? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, so my, assuming I'm reelected, uh, <laughs> and, uh, which I think I've got a good shot at, uh, mm -hmm. uh, my district will be Bethel, Rochester, Stockbridge, and Hancock. Uh, Pittsfield got put in with Killington, and uh, uh, and so so that would be my district. In fact, that's where I've been doing most of my campaigning is in Hancock because I don't know any of them. Uh, I didn't. I do now. So is that what you did? You gained Hancock and lost Pittsfield. I, I gained Hancock, lost Pittsfield. Okay. okay. And uh, um, and and then they did the weird thing of they took Rochester out of Windsor County and put it in Addison County. I heard. Uh, in the Senate. Wow. And so, so the that. representative is, so they have, they're getting half, right? The representative is Windsor County, but their senator is Addison County? Yeah, and, and, and the same is now true, therefore, for Hancock, because Hancock is in Addison County. Right. Yeah. Uh, so they still have the Addison senators, but now they've got a uh -huh. Windsor County I, representative. I didn't even know they would do that, so that's interesting. You have to pass out a road map of yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, where you're at on the totem pole here. Yeah. Mm. I, I mean, I'm still just glad I didn't get Granville. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> there, there was that discussion, and I was just like, you know, East Granville and West Granville, you can't get there from here. Right. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. And uh, so. Exactly. Yeah. Well, some great people in Hancock, so I'm sure you get to meet some. Yeah great folks so all right well um, thanks Kurt yeah thank you so yeah I'll just um if you just email me I'm just curious like I said about the appropriation schedule I'll, I'll, I'll get, I'll get just that, in that case I right. want to try that out I yeah I know it takes a lot of work but um I've done it before just so just in case I just would like to know for sure I don't want to miss any important <laughs> deadline <laughs> so, thank you and thank you for keeping us updated last and will you be resuming the right, breakfast? 6.32, you know? are a little behind, but not bad. Will, they be, behind. will you and the senators who are elected be resuming the breakfasts? I, I think so. I mean, part of the problem this time was, was Dave not, I mean, you know, first there was a pandemic, but then Dave, Dave wasn't sure about hosting those kind of events in his, you know, so. Uh, I'm I'm open to okay. those breakfasts, and I, I'm sure the senators are as well. It's just because um, I think they're a great opportunity to get out there. And I, I wish all my towns did did it, but they don't. So. Okay. Thanks. So. Thank you, Gary. Yep. Good luck at, in November. Good luck in November. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I said, I think. Are you running unopposed? And what? Are you running unopposed? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, there you go. I said I oh, I. For your chance. <laughs> I, was, I, I don't know about that, so I wasn't sure. <clears throat> All right. And the next uh, appointment we had was Nicole. Tell me where you're saying. Mm hmm. 
Mm -hmm. So they, I gave them your, um, the information that you gave me about the Resilient Communities Program and just explained that it was no monetary, monetary component, that it's just manpower only. So I gave them a copy of the rules plus your, um, you know, your, the application you want to submit. Thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was really appreciative how we're talking about state matters um, because this is really right in that category. The, over the past few years, the state of Vermont passed the, the Climate Action Plan. And one of the things that came out of that was a lot of funding. Another thing that came out was a lot of pressure to adhere to these um, enhanced energy standards. I think those are from the Act 174 updates from our last town plan update. Um, and you know, it's, it's exciting because the energy committees have traditionally been pushing for the policy. Now the policy is here. So we can act, right? But we can't because we're lacking resources. Um, and so what's in that application reflects things that we've talked about in the Energy Committee. Uh, the first thing right at the top is that regional energy coordinator discussion, which as I found out is actually pretty common. Like Broughton, or Bennington County, they have an energy coordinator. Wyndham, they have an energy coordinator. Um, you know, we have one right next door, Jeff Martin with those seven towns. Those seven towns also have higher median incomes than ours. Um, so when this application, it's not for financing, it's just for planning help. The Vermont Council of Rural Development has this program where they award assistance, human resources, to three to five Vermont communities. Um, and usually I don't like to rush applications, give everyone time to think and sort it out. Um, but this one, we've actually been talking about for a while. These are all things hopefully everyone's familiar with. Um, so that is what's in front of you at this time. Um, I think it's great that you guys took the time to do that. And, and it's nice that I was happy. I mean, money's great, but manpower is the key sometimes. So the fact that when you said that to me and I kind of read through the rules and then I just like emailed you back and like, so manpower, no money, I'm like, this is, this is great. And especially too, because you're town committee and you know, you're hampered. Everybody's got jobs and work and it's hard to, when a lot of this takes all the time. So I was grateful that you guys found it and did the application, so. We can thank City Metcalf. Oh, great. <laughs> and so, so as I said, there's no, matching funds, but per your grant policy, um, you know, you just need to approve or not that they can submit the request. And what do you currently have for membership at the Energy Committee? Right now we have three. Um, next meeting, hopefully we'll have four. Yeah. And one thing to note is that the co-chair, Chris Scheffler, he lives in South Royalton. Yeah. He makes the trip over. Yeah. Um, so when we kind of think about that regional focus, I, I kind of feel like we're stealing him from South Royalton, and I mm -hmm. would kind of like to see us have better <laughs> sharing of resources in that sense. So right now we have three. Anybody have the uh, board any comment in regards to the proposal, or if not, just motion to approve? Actually, before you do that, if I could get some feedback from that list, what would you prioritize? Is there something not on that list you want to see? Folks on the internet, that is open to you as well. Um, I would prioritize the uh, regional coordinator and the growth of the committee. Recruiting help. And um, what was I looking at? I, I thought, you know, just the way I think anyways, is in order to come up with any type of plan, right, because essentially that's what we're doing is we're putting a plan together, is, is to find out, you know, what is our current footprint. So, I mean, I kind of, when I was reading through those, I mean, there's a lot of questions I have when it comes to, like, you know, a regional coordinator, like, you know, where is it, how much you pay, like we are talking about, our median household income is, is lower than our neighboring um, areas, so, you know, theory will pay a little bit more. Um, but the first is, would be curious, and I don't think would be, take a lot of time, is to figure out what is our current footprint, you know, with, 
I mean, we're not a big mis municipality to begin with, so trying to, trying to formalize our footprint, I would think, would be kind of a reasonable, um, easy time keep to, to do. Um, and in some of these, we'll probably take some discussions on, you know, money, logistics, um, you know, or other types of financial help, either at the state level or yeah. regional level. Or, but I, I, that was kind of the one that stuck out to me when I was reading through it. <clears throat> and I was thinking about the, um, I, I don't think it's a priority to deal with the green vehicles. I just, I just think that's too soon. I think we're just a ways away from that. But I, I know there's been a lot of talk about the EV, asked about the um, charging station. And I'm just really curious about that, about when we put, how long is it gonna last? Who's gonna pay for the electricity? How long is there sort of a warranty on it? Once the thing, you know, what's the life expectancy? Is it only five years? Is it gonna, is someone have to sit there for eight hours or, cause what are they gonna do for it? You know what I mean? Like I'm curious about the actual, how that thing is gonna work, how long it's worked and who's paying for it and how is it gonna be who's maintaining it, and then what happens when it, oh, just, just say I'm making this up, just say it only has a five year life expectancy, is it gonna cost us a fortune to get rid of? Like, I don't, that sort of thing. That was my concern originally. I know we mm. talked about this a few, a few years ago. I'm assuming somebody could put a credit card in there and pay for their own electricity and, and that, because I did make a note that, you know, about running the, um, conduit that you and I talked about, making sure I cover that base. But so I'm just curious about that because I don't know anything about it. So for me, if they're going to give you manpower, I'm like, well, and somebody has figured all that stuff out, <laughs> so we shouldn't have to. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yes, I agree. So I was just curious about that, just the whole how the thing actually works. And and, and, and I guess some of it having gone through the exercise a little bit over the last couple of years, because we, for a while, I think it was right before you came on with the board, Nicole, when um, we, were, we were actually talking about a charging station, um, right level two yeah. charger or yep. something like that at that right time, and too. then the grant or something changed or whatever it was. But, you know, I know it's a town committee, but sometimes I guess like the way I see it is instead of maybe a town having a charger station, like, what can our town committee do to offer their time and assistance to local businesses to develop something like that? So like, instead of the town of Bethel putting in a charging station, what about, uh, you know, talking with Champlain Farms or, or McAuliffe's on maybe giving them the right direction? Maybe they could put a charging station in for, for nothing and they don't know about that. Or, and then I kind of looked the same thing with like, you know, instead of, you know, a town endeavor is how can we help our residents develop solar wind alternative measures sure. that direction. And I haven't heard really anybody on the town level say climate change isn't real, this is a waste of time. I've just heard everyone have really good, you know, like discussions, questions they want to ask, information that we yeah. need because the industry is changing so rapidly. And it's just ridiculous to ask volunteers to stay on top of that and be, you know, like this level of professionalism yeah. when you're not getting paid. Um, and so, you know, in this case, I just want to make sure that when we send this application in, whether or not we get it, we're telling somebody that we're not just going to have you put this all on us. You know, we do need help here. And mm -hmm. we can be the squeaky wheel that gets the oil. Yeah, good for you. And you're right. It's, it's tough. I mean, as a member of the Planning Commission, um, it's tough to keep track of all the, I mean, that's why we write like planning grants to get assistance because we can't keep track of all the, the rules and the changes and the, you know, so I totally feel your situation and I really appreciate you taking the time to do the application. I, I think it's, it's a good one and i pulling for you to get it. So when, when, oh, sorry, Gene. I was just going to say, in terms of the charging station, I would encourage consideration of renters before businesses in terms of location and working with landlords to provide that was one. And the other is compatibility. Is the only compatible charger 
a Tesla? Or are there other systems that might also be yeah, there's, considered? Yeah, there's just so many questions. So, so many ways just to two, two additional it. concerns. Uh, but, you know, in either case, whether we're encouraging business owners, encouraging homeowners and, like, downtown apartment owners, um, or, or the town to do installations, it's definitely going to take some, you know, planning discussions and just time, um, as well as money. Um, but the money kind of seems like the easy part when you think about all the questions <laughs> that we have about charging stations. Um, and so, but that's, um, just to be clear, we've tabled that, so we're, hope, you know, maybe we could revive it, but we're, we'll see how this application goes, we'll see how our goals go for the early next year, and, um, yeah. Do you know who uh, installed the station at the, the barn at Randolph Center? I do not. Because I'm going to tell you something, there's some mega bucks it's spent there. That, that, and I know, I've, I've installed a bunch of these char charging stations, nothing like that. That's like the Taj Mahal <laughs> of charging stations with four charging stations and two places to park. Who the hell designed that? Uh -huh. And we've got enough power coming in there to run half the town of Randolph. Wow. That's what I do for a living. So I would like to know what the hell they were thinking <laughs> yeah. when they built that because I'd, I'd like to understand. Yeah, and it sounds like it was a private installation, like the you know, definitely the business owner oh, okay. decided that that would bring value to their business, either now or sometime soon. I bet you're right. Yeah. Oh my God, that, that installation is over the top. It is something. I'm glad that they replanted the buffer with some trees after that, too. They ripped everything out. But Lindley, do you want to make a motion? <laughs> Okay, just need a second. Okay. She moved to approve the grant application oh. submission. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Now, back to a question for you while I have it on my mind. <laughs> uh oh. Thank you, Nicole. Have a good night. You too. And it, and it has to do with oh, so climate good. initiatives. Is So we talk about climate initiatives and how, you know, we want everybody to do weatherization and everybody to do all these pieces, right? So I'm in the process of replacing all the windows in my house because they're old and they need new windows and going to go through the process of reinsulating and all that stuff. And people are like, there's so many grants out there to get money. And you look to the grants and this is where I have a hard time with the state. Does the state want us to do this or not? Because the grants are only offered to a small minority of people that typically don't even own a home. You know what I mean? So like. You could get 50% of your windows covered if you are under a certain income or, you know what I mean? And it's like the, the minority of people that use that is so small. And I'm like, if this is really a climate initiative that the state really wants everybody to be a part of and winterize, then why not make that equally available to everybody? Like, why only offer that to a certain subsection of income people rather than why not offer it to me? Because just because I make more money doesn't mean that my costs are, you know, more. I, I think the argument would be that that you want to start with the the most financially vulnerable folks and the ones that will never be able to, like, you know, push come to shove. If you absolutely had to weatherize your house, you could probably find a way to finance it. Whereas there are definitely some people who just. Yeah, as you say, they, they fall into a category where, where they, they, they can barely afford their living space. And so um, the idea is, is to start with the most vulnerable populations and work your way up the stream. Um, and so that's, that's, that's kind of the reasoning behind all that. Um, and so far, uh, at least in the past uh, couple of rounds of the weatherization, it, I mean, it, the board clears the, the money all gets gets distributed. So it's not it's not like uh, you know all the all the lower income folks have 
have, have taken advantage of it, and so we have nobody to give the money to. Uh, and so that's the, uh, that's the, the thing. So it is helping. And in one of the project, I would just start looking at other things, like if I was going to do an alternative heat at my house, or different ones, and it's like there's lots of grants out there, but 99% of us don't qualify for those grants. And it's like, oh, if this really is about, money raised his hand. you know, a footprint and reducing our footprint, when you offer that to everybody to reduce your footprint, you know, or is it just, <coughs> Lenny, or, or Lenny is it just typically a, we're going to say we want to do something because it sounds nice, but in all actual reality, we're not going to really fund it, you know? I mean, it's, you know, yeah. right, Alec? I mean, he's back there. Yeah, I mean, he's the insulation uh, guy, whoops. so. Yeah. Hang on. <laughs> Hang on, Lenny. Here, oh. Um, <laughs> yeah, go, out. So, a lot of that thing, Efficiency Vermont has secured that, and it, and it is based some on income. There's some available to everybody. It doesn't matter if you make 100,000 or 100 million. You can get up to a certain amount back. They've tiered it for the lower income because they have no disposable income, nothing, you know, very rarely. Most of them have to get a loan to get any of this work done. And they've made it so that it's a little bit more of a carrot. And quite frequently, they live in houses that are, not, are much more in need of it than most of us. Um, you know, I, I had worked doing this with the weatherization program before I went off on my own 17 years ago. And the, the houses where people couldn't afford to pay for any of it, and the state had to come in, it ran from the little old lady on a pension to places where, quite frankly, I thought they should have been torn down. I, you know, there were some where I went, I can't believe we're putting 10 grand into this place, but they had, that was their house, that's the way it went. Um, but the reason why there's more available to that lower tier is because it's completely unattainable for most of that that group, whereas, you know, a lot of people in the mid to upper income ranges have more of a disposable income. It's, whether it's fair or not, eh, what we're having a problem with right now is actually finding people to do the work. Okay. I'm, I've been booked out for years. I'm literally, I've just been inundated. It's been crazy. I mean, I, I still haven't been to your house to look at. Um, you know, I haven't, I haven't looked at a building for quite a while here. Um, I also, in the summertime, change out to a different line of work, so yeah. <laughs> puts me further, further behind. But I have, I, I had three people call today, and I said, well, why don't you try these people? Oh, no, they're, they're a year and a half out, too. So, um, it's... Well, it's, I mean, I just like my neighbor, he just literally changed out all the windows in his house across the street over the summer. Mm -hmm. And I was asking him, he's like, oh, I didn't get any money. You know, but, you know, and I wouldn't say he's a, a wealthy individual. You know, I wouldn't say I'm a wealthy individual, but it's like, I actually did you know. insulation work at their house. I backed out their old yeah, insulation. Yeah, yeah, a couple yep. years ago. Yep. And, um, and yeah, they had been kind of going in stages on there. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they did have that front corner there she calls it the fishbowl window there. That was rotted, it, it leaked at one point in time and they knew they needed to get that done, but they, they went with the right, insulation part you know, first. My point is just, I think there are a lot of people that want to take a proactive approach to this, right? Before somebody tells you you have to do something, right? But regardless of what your income is, you know, we all can't, I mean, I can't turn around and afford to replace every window and update my heating system and re-insulate it and all that at the same time. I have to do it in stages, you know, like you were talking about. Um, and you would just think that there'd be more help out there for everybody, you know. Um, Case in point, we talked about the, the uh, energy, yeah. and the EV situation. If I wanted to put on solar panels and get an EV car, there's about a $7,500 uh, federal over so many years tax credit, but it's going to cost me a hundred grand to do that. I don't have a disposable hundred thousand dollars to spend right now, but
but there, this is happening to those people, this is on the other end. You can afford $100,000, so you're getting these credits. It, this, somebody needs to look at some of this stuff. You have plenty. Well, you all pretty much, the three of you pretty much encompass what I was gonna say, but my question to Kurt is, if they're doing these lower and these extremely lower income people first, is there a timeline where they're going to begin to release this more and more for people who are in the middle, who I've looked into it, we've looked into it a lot um, of different ways and it's expensive to put that money out there. Um, and the grants, they're not really available for her. Let me take me personally for me, I don't qualify because of where we are, but where we are monetarily. So how does that work? If you're saying that the that they're starting with this, is there a timeline? Do they have an official timeline when they're gonna start adding and including more people, more middle-class people, those who aren't available to the extreme? It looks like you have- I have two things. One, uh, the state has been short-sighted in terms of its weatherization in giving a very low priority, if any, assistance to windows. First, uh, the, that's a major loss of, of, win, of support for the those at the very low. The state has also been short-sighted, although there are conversations now with of considering not just the low income, the lowest income, but the low to lower middle. Uh, so that's, those are two places that I think the state needs to step up. And that may or may not help the people who are speaking here, but it's uh, two things that I think need to be addressed. And of course, I mean, you're absolutely right. And, uh, and the state faces the same issue that the town faces when, with, when its budget, which is, is yeah, if we put more money into that, where are we going to get that money? And, uh, yeah, and do we take it from something else or do we raise taxes? No, right? Yeah, I mean, so, so yeah, it, it becomes those kinds of things. And so there's always a little bit of a, a push-pull, you know, whose priorities, the priority of, of, of the choice today. And unfortunately, I think what happens is, is, is so, um, I think what happens is, is, is this project gets a little money, then that project gets a little money, and this project gets a little money, and, and ultimately none of them get enough to have a, a, a super impact, but at least everybody gets a little bit. And I don't know if that's the right answer, uh, but, but that is, I think, is often the strategy that's employed. If, if the state is going to continue to focus on renewable energy credits and clean heat credits for weather, winterization or weatherization, that's a place where it's not about your budget. Uh, it's about somebody else's budget. And I think you ought to, the state, I think, is short-sighted if it's going to go to the credit pattern that it has gone to in the past. I, I can tell you why they don't put much money into windows is because they don't make a big difference. They, they try to put the money into some place where the improvement will be significant. The difference in a brand new thermal pane window and your old farmhouse window is very small. You can go through and seal up that little farmhouse window and the difference is approximately an R2 over the whole unit. Whereas you can go into your attic and you can add an R40 in that huge amount of space and make a significant amount of difference, uh, as well as the air sealing component of it. Air sealing windows adds, but like I said, you can go with rope caulk, you can put sash locks and things like that, which greatly improve that old farmhouse window. So and I'm really. Point, and the point I'm just trying to make is, you know, if the agenda needs to be pushed to this level, then the monetary value needs to come up to the value that you. If you don't have the monetary value, then then the agenda needs to come down a little bit because you can't can't expect people, regardless of how much they make, 
to make these rapid adjustments, you know, I mean, with, we'll call it 10% inflation out there right now, right? So, um, but. What do you think, Ellie? You want to go next? Yeah, that would be good. <laughs> <laughs> that would be good. Um, well, you uh, have seen the, us, the REC committee, um, and we've worked really hard to provide for the young people in Bethel. And so we made a phase one of a wonderful skate park, skateboard park. And that skateboard park has been seeing a lot of activity. Um, kids and, and um, various ages of people use it six months of the year. The, and a variety of people use it from all areas around, not just Bethel, but as far reaching as Rutland and Lebanon. And so um, when we were start doing the skateboard park, we knew that we had to do it in two phases, and we did the first phase. And so in order to do the second phase, we went um, and applied for a land water conservation fund. We uh, um, applied for that fund two years ago and um, we were uh, told and accepted that we could have $25,000 as a matching, that they would, um, that we, they, they would accept us to have $25,000 from that fund, and we just had to match it by $25,000. We've been working really, really hard in the last, and, and we have made that match. Um, I met with Therese um, in September to confirm that we have raised that $25,000. And so we had, in the, in the two years that we have been fundraising for the $25,000, we have said to people, help us out. And, 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 and in all our fundraising, we said, well, phase two, we will, um, we, our goal is to um, raise this 25000 and um, do phase two, build phase two in 2023. So, um, so basically, um, it's on Michael Parker's schedule for 2023. We have contacted him, and he said, you know, it, it's, he's got it um, uh, penciled in on his schedule, so he's... He's on board, and so when meeting with Therese and confirming that we have raised the $25,000, um, she said that her concern is that the site work, for phase one, the site work was 10000 but with inflation, she was concerned that the site work would be 35000 yeah, I just don't know. It's just yeah. so hard with all the diesel prices yeah. and everything right. has gone it's up. Because I think we spent, what, nine plus three, around 12, I think, for yeah. the first phase. And I, okay. how much, I don't know how much bigger it is, but yeah. I just don't know. It's hard so, to know. Anyway, so in anticipating um, the inflation and, and the gas of 35000 for site work, um, and looking that um, in the improvement fund, the the balance. The last town report was over seventy-two thousand. Um, the committee felt that that we're willing to talk to um, construction people and people that do site work and everything, and and see if we can get any discounts or anything, uh, and um, and work toward five thousand of the. 35,000, but, but we'd like to see if the voters or um, would, would okay us or you guys okay us to take 30,000 out of the improvement fund. I just have a quick question. So 50,000, so Michael Parker has agreed to do the second phase for the 50,000? That's what we've been negotiating with. Oh, okay, good. So let me just, I just want to clarify um, your request. So it sounds like the, the 30000 that you'd like to move from 
from the recreational fund to use towards the skate park. To, for the site work. It sounds like would be just for the site work piece, right? Right. Yeah, okay. Of right. which we don't, at this point, don't really know how much right. that may cost. Right. It may be significantly lower. Right. Okay. That's all we want is... We is there, <clears throat> you know, before we get winter, is there, is there any opportunities to have a couple of site work contractors take a look at roundabout what would have to be done there and get maybe a sure, some sure. sort of estimate that we could better than judge if right. we wanted to move that money you know what right. i mean we're happy to, to um um we're we're happy to do that um um we um dj is talked to her her husband paul feeney has been willing to to um to help us a little bit on site work and stuff like that it might be. Who, who did the first one? And, did Dylan do that? Yeah. And and we have a list of we at our committee meeting we um, um, made a list of people that we could talk to and um, we just haven't done that yet. But we're we're in uh, each of our committee members agreed to a person that they would talk to um, to talk to these people and and we want to do that right away. But, yeah. I'm sure Paul could, you, you, Paul or Dylan, because Dylan did it last time, uh, Jeff Gilman, any one of them could take a look at your drawing and just meet you over there and give you an estimate on, yeah. on how much it would cost. So, um, or what, obviously <clears throat> just a, just an estimate, but yeah. any one of them. So I guess, it. yeah. I so. just want to be uh, um, proactive and really start planning and, you know, and do and find out all the things we need to do to get this done next year because it would be great to get this done. So before we, well, one, I, I think it'd be best to make a decision like that when the whole board's here. Paul's, Paul's out right now. Okay. Um, but more so, it'd be nice to gather a little more detailed cost, potential cost information on that before. Um, so if it was possible, you know, maybe not for the next meeting, but the second meeting in November. Okay. Maybe that give you enough time to see if we can get some sort of estimate on what we're talking over the air. Because cause the other thing, too, is yeah, you said we got 70 some odd thousand dollars yeah, or 80, well, we plus whatever we're adding right this now. year. 80. Yeah, so we're at 89. So I we think have right that money minute. in there. Right. Um, and then I guess at that point is, depending on how much that does actually cost, is you know, do we use it towards skate park um, phase two? I, I know we have some other things coming down the pipe for the recreational department with mm -hmm. pool and things that are going to be kind of yeah, costly. On that. Yeah. No, no, we're working on it. Deidre has been in I contact. Heard, I heard pretty big numbers being thrown around. Me too, because she so had you reached. Might, you might want to think about that because. Right. Yeah, that might be the first thing we they, we fund. She's she well, has reached out to them. That that project is um, more in as a project for two or three years down the road, whereas we can get this project done and be done with this. Well, I just I'm thinking, Elliot. It's just it's. I heard that it was bad. So we had to move on that project well, right I away. Well, I'm told that it's a project. It's going to take us a little bit to just, I mean, yeah, we'll have the project. numbers. It's going to be huge. We'll have yeah. the better numbers over the winter because we've been in contact with um, Gunite. There was a local contract. They put us with a guy in Massachusetts, and Dietrich sent him dimensions and this and that. And, and um, you know, so there's definitely, we know we're leaking. We know we're losing money on, you know, electric and water and chlorine because obviously we know we have a leak underground um, with the piping but yeah it's 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 going to be a big ticket $70,000 yeah to do this project to work for the rec center right and they would like 30 so that leaves us with 40 I know and we need a hundred yeah but, or, but that's that's why I'm saying Dave that's going to be a little tough we're going to need like to go, then now we got to go back to the town and say okay we need sixty thousand dollars yeah, at, at least. Well, that's why I'm saying right now before we make a decision on 30. Projects like that, 
You, there's, you know, grants and other things to help with the pool. Well, maybe, yeah. We haven't yeah. located one yet, but we okay. haven't started looking. And yeah. the other thing, too, is I don't remember. I, this was a discussion. Ellie has a good memory about this sort of stuff. But I remember when you did the first phase that there was prior times that the rec committee had gone to town meeting and got appropriations for the skate park, which you gave them that money for phase one, right? You got yeah, all that, yes. Yeah, so that may be the other option too, is sending them to the voters. A whack. You know, 10,000 here, 10,000 there, where if the pool needs 60,000, we're gonna be asking them for $60,000 this year. Mm, I know, it's I don't want well, to I mean, that's why that. I'm saying right now, it's probably best that the, we get some be, sort of estimate. better guesstimate of what, I mean, if that site were to make it up, it's 12,000 versus 30, it makes our decision maybe a little bit little easier. easier. If right. it comes back and they say 35,000, then maybe we get to really figure what the bigger scheme looks like, right? But it also sounds like the Ellie's got a grant that she has to use within a certain period of time or else she loses her matching funds, right? Right, right. So. And, and, and basically, you know, we're, we, we are so um, gun ho and so supportive that we've been you know, well, fundraising really well, and and we're willing to do more fundraising, you know, um, um, to get this done. But we we need some help. Sure. So why don't we? I don't know if two weeks two weeks might not be enough time to get somebody to come out and look at it and okay, everything. So I, I mean, if it does, we'll, then we'll just we'll shoot for this. Yeah, just yeah. find out. Just let me yeah. know as soon as yeah. you get asked about when yeah. you want to be on we'll the agenda. Shoot for it and then Happy to put we'll you on. Do, yeah. do what we can. Yeah, just find out, and then yeah. and maybe there'll be a lot less than. I mean, I'm just throwing a number. As I said yeah. in my email, I'm I mean, just. She, I'm she was just throwing a number. But we want to be proactive and be yeah. prepared. We don't want to just. We want to also consider the amount of people you serve with the skate skate park versus the amount of people you serve with the pool. The pool is for eight weeks out of the year. We serve the, a lot of people for six months with the skate park. With the pool, we serve um, a few families for th eight weeks. So I am thinking of numbers. Okay. Well, I just. Kurt's gonna find so much money. At I haven't seen a lot of people at the skate park. Right. right. That there. And and we do workshops on well, our workshops, the kickflip workshops. Every summer has been very good and, and people come out for that. We have families and kids that uh, it's been action packed, the, the kick fit workshops both summers. And the school did a nice job. They fundraised and gave you a check. For right, the middle, middle school. school. We have all the middle schoolers yeah. and they fundraised set over $700. They did. So, so, so we have all these people that are really interested. And the school in, has been over and used it and yeah, done stuff. Yeah, they and, use it, the programs from the school use it. Yeah, it's been good. I mean, you definitely see people there. And, yeah. And um, we had it sealed and so we'll have to have, we have it sealed every year so mm -hmm. then Michael comes back and takes care of that. So, no, so it's, it's been a nice draw. The commitment needs to be, what's your due date for having a commitment on this? Is it this calendar year or? It's, it's uh, 2023. The end of the calendar year 2023. Right. But when does your grant have to be? Is that what you're talking about? Your grant? Yeah. When, when, when does your grant have to be spent? I, I don't know because they have been slow. They have been so, so slow. slow. You, I, we haven't even seen the grant agreement yet. No, because yeah, so they, just right. wanted, they finally got back to us wanting um, a license of, what was it that asked for? Oh, I don't even remember now, but they a Certificate of insurance. Insurance, yeah, yeah, but you're right. They just got back to us. Okay. So they've so been slow because time. of COVID. COVID yeah, we, we could have could have a couple more years. I, I, you know what? It would be interesting for you to, you seem to have good luck emailing her and ask yeah. her, like, when, tell her, you went to the select board, everybody wants to know when we're going to see the grant agreement, because right. you're right, you don't know what you're dealing with. But basically, what Ellie's going to need is, if the money doesn't come from the capital fund, if you don't distribute the money from the capital fund, then she should... Then she's also saying that basically if you don't do it, she wants to be included in the warning for town meeting so she can go directly to the well, voters. So I that decision, that, yeah. No, no, I just want to be clear. I'm also thinking about 
town meeting warrant will yep. talk about beginning in June or July the of budget. the yeah. new budget year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you wouldn't be right. able to do just anything until July. Do right. anything until July if right. it if it went to town or, meeting. I mean, or if we knew she got the money, she could take the money from the capital funds. Right. Yeah, we have this in the capital fund. Because it would be replenished. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, she'd just, be okay. I'm just yeah. trying to think through and Yeah, yeah. It. No, that's fine. I just want to be clear that either yeah. or Ellie's we want to make sure she has both opportunities. Yeah, so just come back to us in November okay. if you make the first first meeting or the second meeting, just let Therese know which one works best for you, Ellie. And, okay. and uh, hopefully support of Ellie. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well thank you. Ellie's bodyguard. You brought a yeah. bodyguard tonight. <laughs> Ellie, I see how it works. Yeah. Thanks, Ellie. Thank you. Thank you for, for helping us. <laughs> All right. So Alex, sorry, we're running a little behind, but Thank you for being here. Uh, once again, I'm here for the Way River Valley Ramblers, just looking for the town to give us permission to run the same sections of road, and same road crossings that we've been running. The town has a map on file. Um, I haven't heard any issues. I did think after I got off the phone with you today that I, um, I'm going to look at that map about those five miles that I was telling you about. And if I remember, I'm sure I have your email. Um, I will email it to you just to see if, or I can look at your road, or your existing map, just to see if those are in conflict. I just, I think I should just tell you that, <laughs> just yeah, in case. Yeah, I think they are. We no. cross Camp Brook above the trailer park. Yeah, yeah, and there's other, there's four other roads. So I just want to, yeah, let you know just so I'll keep you in the loop. So I'll send you an email and let you know about that. Um, but I haven't heard any issues about um, ramblers or BAST or using the trails, because you're obviously a local entity of BAST, right? Yes. So, yeah. So yeah. I have cover. So we, we cover Royalton. We groom the Royalton trails. Royalton has their own club that actually maintains their sections of the trail. Um, but we contract room their trail, and then we cover basically from Christian Hill right up by um, uh, where we come on to the Dean's property. Mm -hmm. That's where we come into Bethel. And then we come up, we cross the interstate there on Christian Hill, duck back in, we cross up, we go up to Quarry Road, we run one small little section of Quarry Road, duck in, cross Sanders Road, cross Sanders Road again, we run a uh, section of Finley Bridge, and we cross Finley Bridge, cross 12. <laughs> yeah. Did you make any headway with the school? To get them to plow the down, the below parking? So I have park I've been just okay. buried this summer, so yeah, I, sure. we're, and, we'll um, cross that bridge when we get to it. I, yeah. it's, it's something that I was, I'm, I'm hoping that possibly we can get a grant through BAST to yeah. Yeah. plow the open to it so like I said they had some uh, extra grant money and and um, so I, I think that you know that might be a possibility that, you know, with, with all the action down there through Carlos Meadow and the trails and mm -hmm. trying to keep that you know I think to maintain yeah. that more of a four season area too Absolutely. you kind of need parking over there somewhere and yeah, that I agree. is a sensible place to park but uh, is. plowing is a bit of a <laughs> Plowing is a bit of an issue. I blew the transmission plow on that yeah. in my plow truck last winter for the snowmobile show. So, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, um, yeah. So, I haven't had any issues uh, brought to my attention. I don't know if you have about the ramblers or roads, certainly. I have no nope. comment. I live on Finley Bridge. One of the places, I don't know if it's the only place that you're actually out on the road, uh, by the, yeah, almost at the bridge. Yep. Yep. Uh, thank you. No problem. Great job uh, coming in, taking, putting the signs out, taking the signs down. Uh, it's appreciated. Well, appreciate being able to use it, so. <laughs> Yeah, we go, we go there, we jump, go up into the field, and then we end up having to run the narrows all the way down through and, until we cut up to Sanders Road. But. Well, I'll, I'll make a motion to allow 
White River Valley Ramblers permission to access the same roads as 2022. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Lindley's raising her hand. She's all good. All set. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming tonight. No problem. Thank My you. Con condolences due for your loss. So I'm yeah. sorry about that. All right, so we will open it up to public comment now. So if there was anything that wasn't on the agenda, we had a bunch of appointments this evening. So if there's anything that's not left on the agenda, which is only three items, uh, mm -hmm. now's, now's the opportunity. There is nobody left in person, so go. it would just be anybody that is online, yeah. which Lenny? is just you, Lenny. So. Lenny or Lindley, you got anything for mm -hmm. public comment? Lenny no. says no. Lindley? Thumbs up, thumbs okay. down. She's good. We'll move forward. <laughs> Lindley's all right. Um, and then we we added the, or I added the item for, and it, it, it's more noticeable on Church Street right now, but it does happen in other parts of the town and parking on the sidewalk. And, and we had brought this up uh, I don't know, maybe three months ago, let's say. Or less. And, yeah. uh, and, and in some of the locations that we were having the bigger issues, we had reached out. Um, to the in, local in, churches. In regards to some of those problem areas of, of uh, parking, making sure that they're accessible for, for individuals to use the sidewalks. And, um, and, and I will say that there are times where you can clearly see that there are individuals that are doing their best um, to park off of the sidewalks, but there was also people as we um, some pictures that were in the um, in the packet in the packet that clearly parked not just on the sidewalk but you know almost on the full sidewalk. Um, and the challenge that we have there, and I, I know the perception in in the community is damage to the sidewalks. And yes, damage can occur to the sidewalks and does occur to the sidewalks, but the the greater issue is the is the handicap accessibility for the sidewalks, and I had brought up that three months ago there that I actually saw an individual that was having to use the roadway um, to to buy route around the sidewalks that were parked on. So because he was in a he or she was in a wheelchair. Yeah, correct? in a motorized, motorized wheelchair. And so and you can clearly see by the pictures that are in the packet that yeah. this isn't like a tire on the curb. This oh, is. No. You know, the, the vehicle is completely half, three quarters of the way on the sidewalk so that it makes it impossible for anybody to go by there in any type of um, ADA compliance type. Yeah. Ve uh, in a stroller, they'd have to go on private property. Some um, of the, the pictures are actually very handy because you can see way down the street that it's, you know, there's no room for a wheelchair. And even if you were in a stroller or, you know, pushing a stroller, you'd be pushing people onto people's lawns. So and, I do think these are really good shots. I mean, I could certainly and, send you know, them Church to the Church Street is, is obvious is the one that gets the most attention because the people drive by. We do have the same issues that occur from time to time on South Main Street. Oh, sure. Um, and there are some at, at times um, that occur in other places, um, you know, on Pleasant Street sometimes, but mm -hmm. but more so on Church Street. And I don't. I don't think any of us at the board want to get to the point where, you know, uh, do we want to put up signs that say no parking or do we want to pass some sort of enforcement code to go out there and ticket people? But I think, at least myself, is this is kind of like the last ditch. Let's get people to buy into making the sidewalks accessible or else we may have to look at what our other options are um, because believe you know all it takes is an unfortunate incident where cars are parked on the sidewalk and an individual has to use the roadway and gets struck by or you know and it doesn't even have to be a, a handicap it could be someone pushing a, a stroller it could be a child walking on the road or and then we we will have some sort of liability to that so um, so I guess at the board level, I was just trying to think, you know, what, what are our brainstorming ideas to reach out to these areas? You know, should we 
reach out like we did before with a little more emphasis we, on let's clean it up? We could send the photos or, with a letter. <clears throat> you know, we could send a photo to the le um, <coughs> with another letter to the you know, to the local churches because they did such a nice job of addressing it during, um, of addressing it, um, you know, during announcement time and say, hey, here are the pictures. So you, because this provides a really nice visual of what is happening. We're not saying they can't park there. We're just saying be mindful of the fact that somebody in a stroller or wheelchair may need to get down that street. And um, so maybe the photos would assist because there already is a statute oh, a law against it. statute it's pretty clear it is mm -hmm. um so my, maybe qu my question would be you sent a letter to the, the churches about we that did stuff, just right? about parking but i think it was did we send do would it be more forceful or more <laughs> impactful to find out what the potential um fines or liabilities of those persons parking illegally would be if we had to enforce it. I, I think that Sometimes when you, you tell somebody, okay, you have to dig in your wallet for $500, mm -hmm. they say, well, wait a minute, maybe we can find another place to park. Yeah. I, I also <laughs> think, too, the <laughs> letter that maybe, um, you, just you, my you wording of the person. letter, maybe that people interpreted it, the letter, less as ADA and more as just damage to the sidewalk from parking on it. So perhaps, you know, my wording wasn't as, you know, clear. clear, yeah, like not just, I mean, obviously I gave you guys a copy of the letter, so maybe it needs to be more focused on the ADA than the pictures and could include what, you know, there is, here's ADA a copy, there's a, cost a lot more than yeah, that's exactly. Well, and, and that's the worry is, it's, I mean, obviously ADA compliance pieces, but it could just be a child, someone walking their dog, yeah. uh, someone pushing a stroller, someone just having a, you know, that just, I mean, in some of those cases, yeah. a, 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 a upright walking person would have some challenges to get, navigate and through some of these, so. Yeah, so you maybe I could find out what the fine is. You um, know, know who some of the people are that are parking here. Yeah. Maybe not all of them, but we have a parking lot that's down the street, not that far. And I'm sure in the wintertime, it'd be a little more difficult to walk that extra 300 yards. But for nine months of the year, there's plenty of parking down below. And be considerate, you know that Joe has a walker or, or is 95 years old mm -hmm. and you're 25, park down there. And let Joe park. park out back where there's parking. Yeah, because there's the white church, I don't sure if everybody has services at the same time, but there's municipal parking lot. There's also the recreation area, which gets plowed in the winter. But does, do they all have services at the same? time? I don't know the uh, answer to it, Well, this one picture shows parked cars in front of the brick church and in front of the Catholic church. Mm -hmm. uh, so I would surmise yeah. that, that the two churches have services at the same time. I and will the, also comment that there isn't enough room for my wife to get by and she would not want to walk on the grass. Yeah. She'd be walking with a cane. Uh, sure. I would and especially this picture that shows all three cars. I think it's... It, it, sh it shows an empty parking lot in front by the white church. <laughs> you're right, it does. <laughs> no, you're, um, looking, you're, you're looking the wrong direction. You're right. If that's, that, like, that's, the, that's, that's the house beside the Catholic church. Oh, okay, but still, I think that... And I think the argument point. could be made... Well, these, okay. I, I think the yeah. argument could be made that at times there are better places to park for individuals that may not have the need to have to park close. But I also, again, I will say that there are, there are people that are actually trying. Of um, course. Because you can clearly see, like on Sunday, you can go through there like this coming Sunday and you can see that some people really are taking a, a chance to park. I mean, the street's really narrow anyways, but they're, they're parking right up against the curb. And then there are other people that just don't care. You know, I mean, right. this isn't like you're going through and you see the tire up on the curb. I mean, they parked the whole vehicle on that sidewalk. I mean, it's... Uh, yeah. I think another letter maybe with the finding how much the fine is, with a copy of the statue, and the photos, I think these photos explain more than the letter. This is a good visual uh, representation of 
imagine if you were in a wheelchair pushing a stroller, you were using a cane, you know, you're just taking up, you know, one, you need to be considerate to leave enough room for, that's all we're asking for is consideration um, for, you know, people with accessibility issues. Be not at a, a meeting of ours, but maybe it's you know Therese directly reaching out to leaders within those churches, whether it's the the ministers or the pastors, or even just individual residents who are leaders within the churches, to explain it a little more directly than a letter. Because I know on the first letter, I fielded a handful of people who didn't get it, and the letter was read at the services, so it's not like they didn't have an opportunity. It maybe was just it didn't quite sink in or the understanding wasn't there. And so maybe a second letter is maybe going to do a little bit of the same and kind of miss the point. Whereas if we talk directly to people and sort of vocalize these concerns directly, then they can regurgitate them and express it a little bit better than just reading a letter at another service. That's true. Who's the pastor at the red? I know the, the priest came in the other day, so I know I can ask Pam his name from the Catholic Church, but who are the pastors at the Red Church and, red the, church white and church? the White Church? Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy. Does he do both? No. Who does no. the White Church? Because I heard they the have white service. White Church and the Brick Church are the same. Although they're the same. Yeah. But so there's Tom Hardy. Church is a church. It's only there. one church. Oh. There's two buildings. Both oh, okay. Church. Well, gotcha. I, there, I learned okay. something. I didn't know that. Yeah. So Tom Hardy. It's, it's okay. Tom Hardy. Okay, so I could reach out to Tom and the local priest and speak directly to him. He did come in the other day and introduce himself with, with Pam, maybe registered. Yeah, I mean, I, I, and I don't think that we want to, I mean, maybe it gets to that point, but I don't think we want to have to go out there and ticket everybody. I think we want to just, let's just work together yeah. and... Mark off the curve. Yeah, well, I'm happy. To, I'm happy to call both um, Tom, yeah, or Reverend Hardy, or, or whatever his. I mean, it's, is. And it's not 100 percent always the churches no. either. I mean, I will say that. Oh no, Ford you know, if, Fest. If Ford and, Fest is going on, you see the same sure. thing. If there's some sort of event, mm -hmm. you know, that there's you'll yeah. see that, and at times you'll see it on South Main Street. Sure. Um, as well. Uh, South Main Street has a little more room, but the other thing too is maybe it's worth considering um, at Forward Fest to speak to the Forward Fest committee and say, hey, you know what? We would like to see some signage along here that says, you know, parking available, but don't park on the sidewalk. Just a temporary yeah. signage for the day that they could yeah, I just, do. But I think that's a good advice, Lindley. I'm happy to reach out to the local um, priest. Excuse me, I can't think of his name right now. And um, and Tom. And maybe and just have throw a those like you're saying. I think the picture. Yeah, sure. You know, the, I'm happy to do that. I think the pictures would explain it very well, right? I mean, I don't, sure. I don't think it's necessarily a dam. It seems like it was received as a damaged thing the first time around. Yes, right? I think so. so. Maybe if they can actually see that if if you were putting this position to have to walk, could you make it around yeah. these cars? No, you couldn't. So. All right, I'm happy to do that. And uh, happy to do that. And I guess we'll just see how it goes and. A couple months from now, if it's still the same, then maybe we have to do something else. We'll send Lindley after him. That's right. I would also just say that Yeah, that's a great idea. We could reach out. Just remember that in the spring. We'll need to reach and, out to John And Betty. I mean, the, the Catholic Church just actually put out an ADA compliance um, From, walkway, yeah. Uh, yeah. portable walkway, I guess I would. So, I mean, there's obviously they are, their own patrons are needing those services. And, it, you know, right. if they're parked on the sidewalk, how do you get by them to get to the to mass or whatever, right? So. Right. <clears throat> not just regular, you know, community folks walking through, so. Right. All right. And then we had Teresa's budget. 
so I, I did fill in whatever I was missing last time, town hall or parks. Maybe it was parks, I guess. I did fill in the rest of that. And then, um, so obviously this time you got the road budget. My hope is to have the rest of the budget to you. Um, but, you know, we're down two staff members right now in the office. So it was and I Pam, don't, Pam and I. So and I don't think the intent was to go through it like on a micro no, level tonight. But no. Can I... Um, on the public works piece, because we had a bunch of discussion last time, yep. the 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 wages for okay, public yep. works is how many full time slash half time positions is that based upon? This is versus what we actually have, because I'm just trying right. to right. This put is that into four people and one seasonal full full time and one seasonal. However, that one being seasonal. Okay. I, I, I'm still in this struggle because we didn't have this. I wasn't clear in our conversation last time. Currently, the one seasonal is f that I'm speaking of would be for Richard's position. Last, when Richard, first Morgan held that position, and it was full time year round. They worked summers doing mowing and but water half his sewer. time got put under water, right? Right, water, sewer, well, half. This would. No, we splitted their wages in three ways. So a portion of it went to roads and per part of the year, obviously, was plowing. The other parks. part was water and the other part was park. So mm -hmm. this last year, um, we had a seasonal person mowing. Adam has moved on. And my concern has been because in the past, we have paid someone who had a CDL. So you're paying a CDL rate to mow. I am nothing if not fiscally conservative. So I was really struggling with that. Uh, and um, so this last year, we were able to pay a seasonal position for mowing, which was the weight, wage I felt was good for that mowing. And then we were able to pay a seasonal. But Richard and I had this discussion. And Richard said, you know, Therese, the person who takes that seasonal position, or if we make it a full time year round like it was, they do not technically need a CDL. They only need a physical because that truck is not does... twenty-five thousand pounds. Exactly. Right. However, it's it's nice to have the CDL in case somebody else, you know, broke a leg or whatever, because they can't rotate in and out just like right. everybody else could have. So, um, I think that it's something that we need to consider: is instead of having a seasonal summer and a seasonal winter. We may have to make that uh, a full-time position again. And, and it, it's tough because the market is so tough right now. You just don't know what the best option is. So in this budget, I'm saying it's still seasonal. It is a seasonal summer person at one wage, and it's a seasonal C CDL this person at a separate wage. Uh, no, this this draft. The one this one you're proposing. Yeah, the one I'm proposing. And we, the one we only had three trucks that require a CDL license. Yes, right. exactly. And, and in the budget we're in currently, how is that budgeted personnel-wise? That was budgeted for three, three full-time and, and two seasonal. Oh, that's right. Three, three full-time. Yep, currently. And, and two seasonal. If two you're thinking we could, if, if we went with that, the new plan, we could have four full-time people. Yes. And no seasonal. We would still need a seasonal to do Richard's route. Why? Right? Let me think about this for a second, Dave, because I've got three, I have, to... I have three truck routes, big truck routes, and then I have the village, and then there was the other position. So we had five people plowing because one person alone managed, pretty much managed Camp Brook, um, did Camp Brook, did, um, uh, excuse me, uh, fall back and do some of the other smaller streets. But once upon a time, one person, you are correct, did all of the yeah, other streets. Three people did. Everything. And so yeah. at one point when we had a full range, we still had, um, Seasonal. So with four, I'm still saying there would be four and a seasonal. So essentially the difference when I'm looking at this, comparing it, is mm -hmm. overall is we've this budget that we're looking at right now. The proposed, yeah. Would be 
adding basically a seasonal and benefits. Would be adding a full? No, well, before, I'm just saying because if you right now we're doing, each. we have three full-time, two seasonals. Right, you're right. And now we're going to four full-time, one seasonal. So essentially you're paying one seasonal more, but now mm -hmm. you're giving all the benefits, benefits right. to one so individual. When I calculated it, I just said, I did the bennies at two people on a family plan right. and two people on a single plan because you don't right. know who you're gonna hire. Yeah. Um, so that was the way I came up with it. Okay, no, I just wanted then, to write that. I know yep. we, <laughs> you, well, me, Gene, Gene was on that last time. We were all trying okay. to figure out how many full-times, part-times. Exactly, and, and, and so we kind of got, so yeah. <clears throat> so I also, um, I don't know yet what the retirement increase is. We're currently at 19.5, I just did like a 3%. Obviously our health insurance is a big jump um, because we had budgeted a 10% increase because we only know the actual rate for half the year. Um, also too, I just made myself a note that workers comp is gonna be workers comp and unemployment um, because we now pay unemployment insurance, but that's not an exorbitant uh, rate. So those were the big changes um, in the top. I think I had tried to explain um, the rest of the, but if you had questions on the rest of it. Um. Not so much. Um, <clears throat> I mean, we could break it down more later, but yeah. I see there was quite a significant increase in the salt. <clears throat> yep, because they, they, um, oh. they had gone from, you want to? Here. They had gone good. from, um, I think I made you a note here. Let me look at that. Sorry. Or, or I guess, how much is the salt? Oh, here, increase? sorry. It had gone from, I think we paid 73 or 78 a ton to 88 per ton this year. Um, and, and it's interesting, too, because I got this note from VLCT saying if you, um, uh, that they were afraid that the rail might strike. And if the rail strikes, they're telling you to top off your salt now. And I'm like, you, VLCT should know that the state had not yet settled the salt contract. We're limited to Cargill because American rock salt um, doesn't have a place to, to uh, stockpile at, at the last iteration. So top off my salt pile. I haven't even got to, you know, I signed something to try to contract them, but I haven't even heard back from them. So I'm like, so push comes to shove, that really comes fresh and everybody's getting sanded because I don't know who's got salt. You know, I have to reach out to Ryan Slack. I saw him this morning, I forgot to ask him. But so, you know, there was a good increase in salt this year and, um, you know, so that was obviously our concern. It, it, I mean, 10 bucks a ton is, is a big jump. Um, so Chris, I was saying that VLCT had put out a thing that if the, if the rail strikes, that we should be topping off our salt, but the state hadn't said- We're just gonna shut the roads down. Though. Yeah, but the state hadn't, <laughs> has not issued, I don't know if they negotiated the contract, and you probably heard American Rock Salt's not coming because they have no place to stockpile in Vermont, so we're dealing with Cargill now, but- I think we need to reinforce to everyone that we're not a clear roads that's right. State. We are not a bare roads bare, policy. We are not. That, we are not. I'm sorry that if you have to get up at four o'clock in the morning to go to work, that your roads are not perfect. Right. I'm sorry. I agree. Because <clears throat> this started Here's 40 years ago. All of a sudden, people were moving mm -hmm. way the hell off yeah. in nowhere and sending a letter to the town, town manager, we need to get out of here at 4.30 to go to work. And we were doing it. And I, I back then I said, what are we doing? No, you can't. Do you think it would be helpful if, you can. We, regardless of what we budget, mm -hmm. do you think it would be helpful to put something out there starting now to the public saying, just a reminder that winter's coming? Sure. Kind of like what Dave Get saying. your winter tires just, on. You know, we're not a bare roads policy. Make sure yep. that you're adequately it's a good idea. getting winter tires or studded snows or four-wheel drive and all that stuff. 
if you want to be a kind of a little bit of a... And then maybe you could put a little blurb in there based upon... This is where you can buy snow tires. This is where you can buy snow tires. Uncertainty of salt this well, year. Yeah, Oops, sorry. not or doing that, but... Uncertainty of salt. Yeah, put out um, now, winter tires, not bare roads. <clears throat> um, we're, you know. think that would be a good idea, Lindley, if we just put a little blurb out there to individuals of, you know, start getting ready. Mother Nature's going to change <laughs> pretty soon. Yeah, I think, I think that we I did. I saw three weeks out, so chances of some snow mm -hmm. coming. I think that we did last year, too, just kind of remind <clears> people. <throat> but we can fight over how much salt and sand lay in and Scobie, do, Montana got 13 inches today. Wow. Really? <clears throat> and we it's do coming. keep that on the website, too, just yeah. to remind people. We do not have a bare roads policy. Mm. And... Um, but anyways, yeah, so salt price yeah. had increased significantly. Mm -hmm. The other thing, too, we're looking at is sand. Is <clears throat> the current sand we get um, has a lot of organic material. This year we are actually buying our sand, the majority of our sand, from pike. And it's, I use the term sand loosely. It's a different material that we'll be mixing with local sand that we purchased. Um, but after... You okay? But after talking to somebody... Um, uh, the part of, you know, a lot of the complaints we've had about sand have been that it's, oh, you know, it's wet, it's, it's very slimy, or it's too fine, or it's so probably because of the amount of the organics in it. So, but if we switch to a better material, then it's actually going to build up the roads and not be just over into the ditches. So that was taken into consideration in this iteration. Um, obviously, <clears throat> an increase in patching material, culvert. I mean, the price of everything has just gone up. And the highway rehab funds that we have in there that follow suit with, yep. matches, with the matching grant. It matches the capital budget. Pieces. It matches the capital budget, <clears throat> which was laid, we laid out into the mm. town report. So that matches that. Um, I made a note in here to add signage for Zvorek. It was something we had talked about, um, certainly at the because of that grant. That and I mentioned it to I asked Rebecca about it, uh, Sanborn Stone, and I just said, look, you know, we don't have a number on the signage. She thought it would be way more than five thousand dollars, but felt that we may be able to get a grant for that. So I don't know if we want to leave five thousand in there as some sort of like match. In case we do get a grant, I don't really know, but I, so that's in there. But at this okay. point, we kind of throw everything in there. Yeah. I also upped our ERAF. Um, that's if the bridge came in at a million. If it comes in a little over that, then this ERAF is a little bit low, and we'd be finishing it off in the next year. Um, over that, we're gonna rebid it. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Hope and you that. yeah. So I'm whole uh, cemeteries still waiting for a, a quote on mm. a um, some tree removal. I also added this year $10,000 for sidewalk replacement. That is nothing. But um, certainly we've had some issues with sidewalks. I'm not even mm -hmm. sure what, how much that would even get me. When I came, it was $1,000, which was ridiculous. And before um, that, we had nothing. So. And before that, we had nothing. So I threw 10 in there. Well, concrete and your $500 a yard in place, yeah. so <clears throat> that doesn't get you very far. It doesn't. Um, so I increased roadside mowing because we've been on a tight loop as far as that, so I don't know his pricing yet for the new year, and last year, um, obviously, we went to 14, and but we still haven't got all of our roads for roadside mowing at the price we have. There's still mm -hmm. places we haven't been able to do, so again, this iteration is just kind of, this is where we're at, and seeing what's in here, but this budget came from um, AJ and Morgan, and um, they also had one change to it. They had. They, got, they didn't like the repairs part, so they, they were like, look, this is too much of a catch-all. They felt like we needed to break out tires, chains, and cutting edges. So that was something that they wanted to see broken out so that people could better understand what was in that budget. That's not repairs. That, that's durable. Durable yeah. goods. So he, but I was, so that was a change that they made. Um, so other than that, obviously the increase in gas, oil, grease, and an increase in mm. diesel. Um, but at this point, you know, some of this is anybody's guess. So uh -huh. those are the updates. I did speak to Mo and Judy um, about the budget for the listers. So I just haven't had a chance to go back and, and do the math. But they were completely open to saying just budget for our regular hours and the rest we could take out of the capital appropriations. Um, I just haven't had a chance to go back and do the math for that. So I'm hoping, fingers crossed, in two mm -hmm. weeks that I'll have the rest of the budget done, revenues and the whole thing. But um, 
Okay. I, you know, we need some staff. Currently, it's just Pam and I. So <laughs> we need some staff. Well, sometime around Thanksgiving, yeah. we'll start picking this thing apart. Yeah, we'll hopefully. Micro level and yeah, hopefully we'll be able to. I know that um, I'm still waiting on the fire departments. And of course, they had um, an issue with uh, the two chiefs being able to coordinate their timing. Mm -hmm. And um, then Pam and I need to sit down and look at her budget um, and any changes that she may need to make uh, for next year. So then I just haven't sat down. I know changes will be Dietrich moving away from the pool, um, bringing someone in there. So she has worked on the rec budget but was on vacation. So I haven't, I asked her for a couple things to think about while she was gone and to come back and throw some numbers at it. So we will have a better understanding of that as well. So hopefully you'll see a full budget. All right. So what questions? You had somebody ask me the other day, where do we get our electricity? So GMP, you know, we pay for, um, okay. we, have a, we have a contract with Green Backer or Green Maple, they kind of two different names. And um, we pay, we had a contract with them because we're part of a solar array. Okay, so so we, do, solar. we do get X amount of kilowatt hours per year from them. They're allocated individually to a list of accounts. So like when we gave up the transfer station, we did a reallocation to move their stuff towards like water sewer. Um, GMP won't let you use any of the allocation towards street lights. Um, but so that's how we do it. So we pay them a set $4,759 a month for a percentage of our electric. And some departments, that's the only bill they get. Others, if there's overuse, they get billed from GMP. Okay. And, and then. They call it net metering. Yeah. Right? That's the term, net metering. Yeah. No. Oh, that, okay, I thought no. that was net the metering is when you're metered on, you have your own solar on your own home, oh, okay. and you use it, and then you give back. There's a, it's okay. something community or group or there, there's another word for it. How okay. a solar array that is not connected to anybody. Yeah. It's just connected to the grid, but X, Y, and Z people are are invested right in that grouping. Because our solar array is in Royalton. Right. So There's where I where I couldn't tell you, but it. maybe Dave knows, but I can't tell you where well, it but is. That's, that, <laughs> I think that's that gets to what the person was asking. Oh, good. And then just a uh, just a comment. Um, if if I read the constable department correctly, mm -hmm. it's two thousand dollars more for contracting it out than for. for or, yeah, over our best guess if we yeah. yes. beefed it up. Yep. And I did have a call today of a woman who, and she <clears throat> encouraged us to, to go towards that, but to go towards contracting. So if, if that's the case, I just want to go on record as saying that's a no-brainer as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. I did <laughs> but, meet with, um, oh, I think he's the sergeant. He gave me his card. Maybe I have it. I do. Uh -huh. He came in. Claude Wyant, he's a captain, excuse me. Sorry, Claude. And he came in and asked what our status was um, because they have capacity. And I just said, you know, we haven't gotten there yet. I said, the select board will make a decision. The select board could decide that using the existing constable budget that we go, because we haven't spent it, that we go towards the sheriff's department sooner, but I told him we hadn't really had that discussion yet, and yeah. I would keep him in the loop. So, but he did okay. um, stop by the other day. So that's, yeah. that's it. Mm -hmm. all right. That's all I have for that. Oh, anything in regards to the ARPA? I yes. mean, I'm assuming that I do. we're gonna have a little more discussion here as we final our budget. But. Yeah, well I did, I finally, um, Sullivan and Powers, our auditor here the other day, so I asked, them because you know there's just been so many iterations of the federal money and what and so I finally talked to them and about the latest word on regu regulations and they just said 
I had told them how I had accounted for the ARPA money. And they said, look, just make a transfer in from and, and for the ARPA and state, like I can calculate out how much would be wages for like public works and whatever. And they just said, do a transfer in, state we're using it to offset wages, then the select board can authorize a transfer of our surplus from the general fund budget into the capital road fund or capital highway equipment or wherever you're gonna put the money. So they said that is the best case scenario because we took it, we like The it. best for audit reasons, is that? Yes. Or? Yes, because, well also audit reasons and the ARPA rules because okay. remember we took it as revenue replacement. So Great. this is the way we could do it. I told them that we had spent some money already directly from it, but we had followed all of the, the rules right. for procurement. So this was their recommendation. So once you decide where you're gonna spend it, um, I did update that sheet and just said, well, plus okay. Plus it makes it easy for auditing wise if you put it into an account fund. Yeah, which is where it is now. Rather than if you spent it on 50 different things. You exactly, know? Yeah. and it's on a fund now. So mm -hmm. I did take the money we're gonna get minus the Laramie, I did the balance. Mm -hmm. You know, still requesting twenty thousand dollars to transfer to the highway capital equipment fund, and then the balance for either local match or your road work. Um, it, it's basically either or, right? Because you're either going to spend highway road money on road construction and updating some of the roads, or um, but we had uh, the match, and it tells how much maybe is eligible to be paid with ARPA funds. So mm -hmm. you're really right there. I, I know a couple people have mentioned that I was low on my website update, as you know, but we're not looking to revamp our entire website. We're just looking to make some updates to it. So I'm hoping we can get it done for five or maybe seven, but maybe be able to get some of the money out of the general fund budget. Um, but other than that, you know, obviously my push is still to do it on roads. Um, do we have any idea? I know it's a moving target, but is, have the listers thrown their best guess of what the grand list might be? No. Is there any? I haven't asked. Is I there any think. reason to believe that the grand list will grow over last year? Oh, or I can ask them. Or? They're in on Monday, Wednesday, so I'll ask. I mean, them. I know that you know. It'd just be nice to know if they think that it'll be somewhat the same, or well, I can just ask. Or them there'll them. be a little growth. I mean, at least we kind of know that. It's, it's the other way around. If, if it goes, if it shrinks, then that's when it really hurts your your budget. So. Um, well, I can ask them because um, we obviously, you know, they're out doing inspections right now, and have found several buildings that were not taxed before. So mm -hmm. um, we can. So we're getting people in compliance with zoning. So we. It can, can just make, especially this awesome. budget season where mm -hmm. we're potentially talking about, um, you know, this uh, inflation cost and, you know, the difference yeah. of the grand list could offset some of that Yeah, where we don't have to take such a hard um, look at certain items, you know. If it, it's going to be hard for them because um, on next year's grand list, um, you know, they could run a 411 right now. And tell us where they stand. So, but I, mean, I know it's not exact number on the penny, but at no. least if they kind of say, "Well, it looks like we're going to see a little growth," mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, I can ask. Or if they say, "Oh, it looks like it shrunk a little bit," mm -hmm. then at least we kind of know yeah. which direction it's going. Well, I mean, we know we have a couple. <clears throat> obviously, Bethel Mills is building a couple new buildings mm -hmm. down there, and um, but I will certainly okay. ask them. And uh, it doesn't hurt to ask. Whatever them. attacked me a few minutes ago is getting you now. Yeah. So. Everybody's so scratchy throat. I don't know so. what it was. All of a sudden, I was sitting here and I couldn't. And my throat went like completely dry. I was like, oh my god. <laughs> so yeah. The, all right. I will happily ask them. Okay. Uh, town manager's report. Did you have anything left in there that we I talk about? Or do we received a notice today? All right, Pam and I did. Uh, the Cannabis Control Board would like to inform you that SLs is a bunch of numbers. A tier one small Kate cultivator outdoor has been issued. A permit has been issued. The cannabis establishment is within your municipality. Uh, please note the address of this establishment is not public information. So they were issued a permit on 929. It's good for a year. 
This is to grow, but not sell? This is to grow, right. yep. Okay. And because any cultivation permits are issued by the state, not us. So apparently we're gonna get this. Um, Did they say indoor or outdoor? I would a small cultivator outdoor. <clears throat> um, so this just says the licensee demonstrated compliance with all the requirements of their blah, blah, blah. So the, the state issues cultivation permits. So we did get that. But I did find it was interesting that you can't, um, that, the, that it's not public information, the address. That was hmm. interesting, interesting to me. Yeah. Um, well, it might be, some of it might be a privacy because people oh, might could try be. to steal products, yeah. right? No safety concern. It was just, yeah. it, I've got no problem with that. It was just an issue. So hmm. I realized, I, I thought, and I apologize for this, I thought that I had updated you guys on this. Um, I had a gentleman in uh, Charlie Davis about Pond Road a couple of weeks ago or, or more. Um, and he was concerned about a curb cut that we had issued on Byam Road because there was a road that connects Byam to Pond. Well, he and I had a conversation about it, and it wasn't on the state highway map. And he was said, it's a class four road. And I'm like, eh, you know, not so much. It's not on our highway map. Well, I went back after speaking with him and did some research, contacted the chief at the state mapping <laughs> office, and he was very helpful. Um, in 2010, the select board added just over five miles of class four road. You know how we approve our highway mileage certificate every year? Well, they received a letter in March and then another letter back in June saying, we did not add your five miles, five point eight one or one eight, um, because you did not provide documentation. They discussed it at their June 2010 select board meeting, but nobody ever did it. So I called the gentleman back at the state and I'm like, look, so now what? You know, because when we had the ancient roads legislation, it was basically if things weren't co claimed, By then it got some dropped. of them went away and he said <clears throat> yes, but that was act whatever, one blah, blah, blah. And then, but don't forget trees, then the state passed another and I'm like, all right. So basically, I have to do a title search on all five of these roads to see if anybody's deed mentions the fact that they entered their property off from Town Highway blank. Um, and I did Pond Road, and I could not find where anybody's deed mentions this. And it's kind of a trick because some deeds do not mention where you access because they didn't necessarily have the right to convey access over a town highway because it wasn't theirs. But so I'm 12 years later mm. dealing with a 2010 issue and I talked to Alex today about one of them and said, hey, do you guys use this? And he's like, no, I said, good. good. And I'll send you the map of where else I hope you're not um, because it may be, if, if we can't prove that these were ever town roads, then they're not going to be added in. And I'm not sure if we have to go through the discontinuance process and say we're discontinuing these or if we actually don't have to take any action because I can't, if I can't prove, but I haven't had the time to do. Hmm. And so what I would have to do is look at, if you've got three houses on that road, I have to do three title searches and go all the way back to try to find in any of those deeds where they mention this town highway. Do you know what the reason for the changes were? Because that was before the ancient road. It, it was around, it was ancient roads. So they, the ancient roads was like 2014, I think? No, it was then because was it was it? their recommendation. Well, Richard, uh, <clears throat> and, and of course, too, who was on that committee? Uh, Rick Wright, Tim Mills, Carl, Carl Russell. Russell. And um, Mr. Dutton, who has passed away. And, I, and so anyways, hmm. uh, Richard remembered seeing something in Tim's files. He went down and got it, brought it to me. It was helpful. Um, and it was part of the ancient roads that they were doing this research. Hmm. And they had made a recommendation to the select board. I found the minutes where they recommended adding this because they said that they felt that they found 
some historical evidence of the road, but they, in the same breath, they also said that the surveys of these roads were not complete. Mm. So, you know, <laughs> so it, it's, it's a problem that I have not had time to look well, at. That was with, uh, back in the old time, those, those folks were very lacking in documentation. Because well, when I was, I true. also served as president of the Snowmobile Club for 10 years, mm -hmm. and trying to find places to go, I found some roads that any any person with any common sense would see this was a road. Yeah. And I asked John Dutton about that, and he said, yep, yeah, that is a road. But we can't claim it because there is no documentation for it to be a road. Exactly, and some of it is, you telling me you're gonna find evidence of 1858 that there's wagon reel ruts from 18, yeah. it's yeah. not gonna happen. And so the only thing I can lean on is the fact is if somebody's deed, Mentioned Made it. reference to it, yeah. I, but you haven't found that yet. Well, I haven't had, yeah. you know, a you day. A it's going to take me. Property? I, I don't Dave know. Dave Bumba was, I think that Pond Road is the road that. No, it's not Dave Bumba. It's Pond Road is uh, is now. Um, well, Byam Road. Dave Bumba lived on Byam Road, right? Yeah, but, but not this property that I'm talking about. There's another piece that comes off Byam that he might, but the one I'm speaking of is now owned by. Alex, it was owned by a bigger piece, uh, well, another Dave property, was that, and then that, Pond that Road. The, uh, it was beyond, not on his property, but at the end of Byam Road as Class 3, right. when he went to Class 4, he said, you guys got it in the wrong place. Mm -hmm. mm. Well, <laughs> and there is two that connect um, Byam and Camp Brook, and they both are on this list of 5.18 miles of... But it's not Camp... Yeah, there is one that goes to yep. Camp Brook, but there's also one that ends up over on the Camp Bell Road. Yeah, so I, I can't tell you, I didn't bring the map, so I can't tell you where specifically these are, but it will take me at least a full day, if not two, is if that, or more, to research these. Is, is that something mm -hmm. that a title company could do? Um, we'd have to pay a significant amount for someone to come in and do a search. I mean, and, the, and I thought about the Class 4 Road Committee, but... No, it would take too long to do that. They'd be too late, and they're decimated because Rick and Tim and, and the three of the members passed away. So it's Alex Reisterer, Chris Fors, who's also really busy, and Derek Aldrighetti, who's also swamped. But to pay someone to do the research would be pricey. I mean, I can do it. It's just going to take, I just need to set aside, yeah. you know, I'm, some I'm time to do it. To yeah, no, I know, and I appreciate and, that. But and I apologize. I should have told you about this, and, and it there just are times slipped my mind. Maybe. Yeah, <laughs> maybe to, we do have money in the budget out. for contract labor, so maybe this is that. Well, and this, I'm also going to see what Dietrich's schedule is when she comes back. Now that she's outside the pool, she may have time mm -hmm. to go in and, and sit and, and go through some deeds, and um, or maybe I could get Jean well, to come in. But updated on yeah it's a i i could also ask jean actually i mean i'll ask jean burnham because lord knows she knows what she's doing and um oh, lovely see if she'd do a research project. but yeah so <laughs> 2010 i'm like i said to the guy you've got to be kidding me he's like no we sent you a letter i'm like oh i'm sure you did hmm. but uh in 2010 <laughs> you would have thought they would have you know 2010 i mean you would think 12 years they would have Followed up a few times saying, hey, uh, following I, up on the letter from 2010. Yeah, I guess they just. Like, where's the uh, 2011 and 2012? Uh, you know, I don't. Is that maybe referenced? I don't you know. Oh, by the way. Do you have copies of those letters you yeah, can send? Yeah, I, I mean, I have I those, mean, so I don't know. After wow. a while, they probably just said, they, that was, they notified um, you two times. They three didn't Three administrations it, ago, so you know. Plus. I like. <laughs> I was uh, like, you got to be kidding. So anyways, those are my two issues was the, the update you on was just the cannabis permit and the highway miles. But that's good thinking, Jean. I'll ask, I'll ask Jean Burnham because well, if just, anybody knows, it's Jean Burnham well, just, who could do the research. Yeah, that's... And uh, God doesn't bless Doesn't need him. to be on your plate. No, I, you know, it's just trying to feel someone qualified to do it. So um, but anyway, so that's it. In the, and then, of course, there's the, the minutes. We had select board meeting minutes from the 10th. Anybody have any changes to those? Or are we good to prove as spelling. noted? Oh, good. Where is that? Uh, select board meeting attended. Uh, oh, where is it? 
there's a place where it said that uh, Lindley move something, and it wasn't past tense move. Moved. Oh, I just see it right here. <laughs> I found it. Okay, good. Moved. Oh, Lindley moved to table. Okay, perfect. All right, I'll make a note. To fix. Fix one here. Okay, thank you. It's always nice. Hey, anything else? Anything else? Here and none, just need a motion to approve as amended. So moved. Okay, moved by Gene. Lindley's Second by it. Lindley. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. And in other communications, there was um, things in the packet from the Energy Committee and uh, Recreational Committee. One other one, I remember right, conservation <laughs> maybe or something. Yeah, and I gave you the I update on that it. working communities challenge. Um, <clears throat> and then Lindley, I have, um, if you swing by the office or I can email it to you, um, I had, can I see that thing for a second, please? What the cannabis, the cannabis thing, yeah. I printed out um, for everybody this guidance for municipalities from the Cannabis Control Board um, just to, let you know because if you don't put it on the warning to vote i have a feeling it's going to be petitioned to have you put it on the warning so this just gives you some information i made a copy for rick benson too just to understand the issue a little bit better now that um they finally come out with some guidance so it was i think in june so i have a hard copy at the office or i can just email it to you and you can print it out yourself whatever's easier uh, email might be best. okay Yeah, and it's no rush. I, I'll just, I'll email it to you. I email Lindley Cannabis thing. Um, I just um, printed out hard copies for everybody. Just, you know, save your ink. So, <laughs> um, and just so you'd have some history on it. That's it. Okay. And I just would comment that the Working Communities Challenge <coughs> thing is what I've been attending and reports back to Yep. The select board about. Yeah, I just, I saw this. Yeah. Came, somebody forwarded this to me. I, I don't know how, or I don't remember anyways, but I thought, you know, that you Sounds might good. like it. That's it. Okay, any other business come before the board? If not, I just need a motion to enter into executive session in regards to personnel. So moved by Lindley. Second. Second. Second by Gene. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So we will enter into executive session. We won't be making any any dec decisions coming out of it. So. No, you will. Oh, oh, coming out of the executive session? Yeah. Okay. But it's okay for Orca. You can. I'll just put it in the minutes later. Don't worry about it. So if you guys just shut down then and stop recording that'd be fine but, but we do need yeah uh, lindley won't go away it'll just be we just need orca to stop recording so okay but lindley because i'm the host so lindley can stay on so do you want orca to pick up and head out or you want them to just is it it's gonna enough? take five minutes so it's it's fine okay. um so we'll just have orca shut down and yep. just step out for like five minutes we'll get all our stuff done and then come in yeah okay perfect does that work for you? Yes, when I come back, you don't need to No. No. Nope. Don't worry about it. We'll no. just wrap up. We'll be fine. But thank you. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. 